All right, we got a special treat today. I got Gary with me. And uh, Gary's had multiple um, encounters with our friends in the forest. He's also got uh, some friends that are have actively tracked him. Sorry guys, let me just get you back just a little bit. There we go. It looked good on the other screen, but on the front screen it doesn't. So, uh, and uh, I pretty much don't have to interview this man. Once he gets started, he's going to tell you everything about it. But first, <laughs> I want a little brief history on you. And a good little brief history uh, that brings us kind of up to this point. Well, without putting everybody to sleep, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just a little brief um, history because I'm going to get you in. Um, actually, uh, obviously born and raised in the United States. Uh, grew up in uh, the uh, Reno, Nevada area. Um, outdoors all my life. Came from a military type family. So um, being pretty uh, pretty self-reliant, aware of your surroundings was just part of the upbringing. Right. You so, know. Um, your father was active duty. Mm -hmm. He um, he spent what? How many years? Thirty-three. Thirty-three years. He w went from like the end of World War II to first part of Vietnam. First part of Vietnam. So that means Korea was in the middle there. Yep. So he did all of Korea. Um. Yeah. Pretty during much. the Korean time yeah. frame. Yeah. Now about you, what, what what's your military history on that? Well, uh, I got thirty years in. I was a uh, combat medic, Navy. Actually, they call a Navy. Uh, corpsman, but uh, our designation was combat medic. Uh, we were embedded with um, ground troops instead of being on board ships. Okay. Um, so, and you've seen active duty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll keep this family friendly. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Uh, so, you have seen active duty a lot? 15 years. 15 years. How many years were you in Afghanistan? Well, off and on, I would say close to. Uh, about half that time. Wow. About about, about half, because uh, some of the activities is kind of hard for a lot of people to understand when you're in the service. It's not a nine to five job, yeah. but um, you uh, find out you're going to go over there and certain what we call MOSs or military um, jobs, specialties. Mm -hmm. um, cover a wide wide spectrum so even though there might be 8,000 people on a base not all 8,000 people go outside the wire as it's called sure so if you're just so happen one of the lucky ones to where you get to travel um, one day you're in one area next day or next mission you're in another area. It's, it's, it's no, well, you know, your, your job is from this city block to that city block. That's not how that. Correct. Not, okay. Not, not how it works. Right. But um, uh, as a medic, uh, you're embedded with um, a lot of different groups. Uh, even, even though I was a Navy designation, um, you're still embedded with the Marines, the Army. The locals, it's wherever a medic needs to go. Yeah, um, which generally means everywhere, everywhere Anywhere, that there's shooting going time. on and bombing and uh, well, we we can't you know any, any activities <laughs> um, like here just recently. If you know people aren't watching TV, um, they had a bombing uh, during the evacuation over That's there. That's right. Yeah. That. Um, I wasn't going to mention Hope, that. Hopefully, um, and I'm saying that a little sarcastically, but hopefully it's the last one. But, you know. Who knows at this point? Yeah. Um, I mean, in the group that, that claimed responsibility for it was an ISIS G, is what they call themselves, and they are actually at war with the Taliban. So, yeah. you well, know, but the Taliban was supposed to protect it. And, um, here, here, here in our little niche of the world, uh, we're. we're yeah, here, okay. Yeah, okay. Here in our little niche, we think we're uh, immune to a lot of stuff, or it will never happen here. But um, to put it in kind of perspective, there's a lot of individual 
gangs, if you want to, as we call them, over there that think they're better than the next one or mm -hmm. they want to outdo each other. Right. And so the shock and awe of their activity upgrades them or makes them feel oh yeah bigger they, and better if they kill but, american troops they're uh well they're yeah, elevated their, their 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 body count is more important uh, to them than what ours is to us but um if you put it in our perspective here if you look at how many special interest groups gangs are in the united states um you know just because some group in the city uh, gets it into their mind to go up, go out on the streets and beat up old people. That's nothing. Right. Or, or uh, some, some individual thinks, well, I saw this on a video. I'll go out and do it in real life. That's just a wannabe. That, that, yeah. that is absolutely yeah. of no caliber compared to what's going on in other, in other countries. Yeah. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, we're pretty lucky with that. But anyway, so um, my uh, you know, military uh, training, and um, both before I went in and uh, while I was in, I think it's pretty much made, made me capable of um, seeing and understanding and, and accepting uh, the things around us more than someone that's never been out of their backyard or uh, lives in a uh, little mm -hmm. protective shell from the people around them. You know. Makes sense, yeah. Okay. So, that leads us right into it. Um, where do you want to start? You start when, whenever? Uh, I would say uh, gr gr uh, gr uh, growing up out west. Well, also, before we start, he's got a group of friends from the military, and they do expeditions. So just to cover that, just to kind of get that on the table, then you kind of kind of will know where he's going with a lot of this, so or some of it anyway. So okay, go. Well, with 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 that, um, can you start with your? Well, no, you you, 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 know, you talk, talk about uh, the group. Um, it is really kind of interesting once you get sitting around in an area and you understand each other to the point of where you can trust each other. I don't mean your, your, your family members because that's a totally different ball game. Yeah, but, yeah. but when you're around a group of people that uh, you're there to protect them and they're there to protect you and you experience um, some pretty stressful things, you open up a lot. You, you, you learn more about the individual than just, well, they're from mm -hmm. whatever part of the United States or the world they're from. But anyway, uh, a group of us got together towards the latter part of uh, our time, and it just so happens that we were all basically on the same uh, same rotation, uh, same amount of years in, same you know, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. I mean, yeah, every, everybody in the service is on their own time schedule. That everybody's got their own X on a calendar. One might be on a Monday, one might be on a Wednesday, one sure. might be you know, but we're all pretty much on the same time time schedule. So anyway. We all got together, sat around the um, table, as it would be, and uh, we just started ratcheting, just started, you know, talking about stuff and what we wanted to do, what our experiences were, how we were brought up, you know, all the usual politically correct <laughs> conversations. <laughs> and one thing led to another, and not everybody, not all the, not all the guys. Um, we're from the same area, you know. Some were, were, were city people. I want you to hold that thought. Hmm. Stop recording. You, you see how aware they are. Okay, um, we're back. Yeah, but anyway, um, and you know, we all just kind of got together and hashed out one thing or, or another, talking about you know common uh, interests and likes, dislikes, issues. Well, as time grew on. Um, Everybody's ready to sign out, uh, retire, because there's really nothing else for military people to do other than stay in the military. It's, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the ones that stay in for a couple of years or that really don't give it a chance, or you're not made to be in the military. <laughs> you know, there's, yeah. it's, it's really not for everybody. But anyway, um, the group um, uh, started out. Uh, they weren't all just a bunch of good old boys. There's uh, 
you know, some of us have, have been to, you know, extended education, school, and uh, which I think is different from just a bunch of good old boys going out there and tromping around uh, thinking that they're chasing uh, or thinking that they're finding something when they're actually spooking themselves or uh, baiting the area with their own roaming around. But like I said, you know, we, we have a, uh, our, our group is uh, very diverse and sometimes we're together, most of the time we're not because when you want to find out more about some area, you divide and conquer. You don't huddle all in one little group, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's just nice to have them around, but um, it's um, it's better to be out there uh, gathering the, the experience than it is sitting around and trying to outdo each other. So let's talk about the experiences then. In, in a group. Well, I said um, a little bit. I uh, grew up out, out west, mm -hmm. and uh, as the United States goes, uh, we are just so diverse in. Uh, terrain and uh, some of the most beautiful places ever but we can go from desert area to high mountain to uh, like where we're sitting here in the uh, eastern woodland area um, the small little mountains as compared to the, the big mountains out west mm -hmm. so the train is um, really de de the train depicts what you're looking for uh, through my, my experience the activities would be a lot like human activities, but on a different uh, dimension, d d a different level. Mm -hmm. You know, look at going on vacation. Not to get sidetracked, but if you have a family that's going to go on a vacation to the desert, they do not prepare or they don't take the same stuff as if they were going to the Arctic. Correct. Okay, so we're fairly new here as far as a species or in the United States goes. The documentation, and this is where the academic part of it comes in. Uh, don't don't be afraid to open up books, go online, learn stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the history, the um, information that is out there just didn't start 10 years ago. And this stuff has been going on way before mm -hmm. uh, any of us sitting here or, or, or even in existence yes. now were, were, were even thought of. It's very true. So what do you tell someone a thousand years ago or time frame wise that they're hallucinating and that they don't know what they're talking about when they're so in tune with their surroundings compared to someone now that very seldom ever knows what what day it is because we're just so out of, out of touch with our abilities as as being here on this planet mm -hmm. you know a quick you know a, a, a quick uh, judgment not to put negative or positive on something but what phase is the moon in right now what, what planets are in, in orbit that we can see, uh, that, you know, in their orbit that we can mm -hmm. see? Uh, what's, what's the cycle of the, the crops right now? When's, when's spawning season? When's, uh, when's um, a certain herd of animals coming uh, in the season? Most people don't know. But back in the day, they did, and they were more aware of what was going on around them, so they're senses were more acute than ours are right now mm -hmm. we have technology they didn't it's replaced our sixth sense yes so anyway be, uh, being raised outside um not really away from technology but having a mixture of uh, outdoor awareness and what we can offer to enhance our ability to be outdoors um, you know, push me down the path of, of, I guess, where I'm at right now in life. But 
be, be, being out west, um, heck, you just jump back up, up in the, the, the mountain range area around uh, California, Nevada, uh, ridge line there, and hike forever and never see anybody. Keep that in mind. You're out on a trail for two or three days. Nobody around, no cell service. No, I mean, you're out there, and suddenly, with experience, you start seeing signs of uh, of um, disturbance. It's good word for it. The disturbance isn't well, you know, like how we will leave beer cans everywhere. Uh, for some reason, uh, we're the only ones that do that. The bears don't do it. <laughs> Um, the wildlife really. Although do I have it. seen a video of a bear getting drunk and he did leave the cans. So. Well, I mean, you know. Uh, and, and, okay. Anyway, um, with my upbringing, I get to go out there and see just what uh, what the nature is really all about. Uh, you know, I was pretty self, you know, self self reliant uh, from a from a young age. I wasn't bear grill or any of those crazy uh, grizzly atoms or anything like that, but. I knew the difference between where I should be and where I shouldn't be, you know, gotcha. just just by the little hair standing up. I guess if that's what you want to call it. Yeah. Um, which is actually a anyway. So um, when's the first time that you became aware of cryptids? I would say, me personally, I was probably 10, 11 years old. And was that you just learned something or you had an experience? We were out camping or out on a, out ha having some fun on a, on, a, on a back trail. And trails are just like highways. You have a, a main traffic pattern that the animals take all the time. Mm -hmm. Then you have their secondary traffic, a secondary trail, which they usually use to uh, uh, divert around something they don't mm -hmm. want to encounter. And then you have uh, spider uh, connecting trails that lead from one to the other to the other, just kind of uh, shortcuts. Well, we were not on a main trail, not on any really heavily traveled trail, and um, decide just to, you know, like, you know, what the heck, you know, just take a break, great view. And uh, one of the people um, noticed that there was some disturbance in the ground went over there and, and looked at it and it, was, well, it looked like something was being uh, moved around. And, uh, but it wasn't still there. Gotcha. You know, it looked, you could tell where it was, but it wasn't there anymore. Yeah. And it wasn't on a landslide. It wasn't um, um, an, uh, during a, uh, done during an earthquake because where it moved to was against gravity. Okay. So if something out in the wild gets shaken, a rock, a tree, it's going to go towards a pass of, pass of least resistance. Correct. Gravity, usually downhill. Well, this ended up going up and away. But anyway, you know, we, we all just kind of, kind, of, kind of sat there and looked at it. And this is a long time ago. Uh, we really, really didn't have the capabilities of doing the technical uh, evidence collecting. It was just, you know, none of us could have moved the object, but wow, it moved up and away mm -hmm. on a grade. Hmm. Well, we looked around, looked around some more, and then ended up uh, finding some markers that uh, were um, no way in the world. I mean, you could not convince me that being that far off the trail in that type of environment um, that it was um, a person shorter than six foot doing it. Okay. No way. And there was, you know, we, we were still little kids and I was like, holy crap, you know, we could walk underneath this and can't even reach up and touch it. Wow. And this thing is there. Mm -hmm. And it's um it's not the typical broken branch that most hikers or hunters do to mark their trail. This was a pretty good sized tree, <laughs> and it wasn't a series of trees. 
like you would get on a, in a microburst or a, uh, a snowstorm or an ice storm. It was very much, uh, you could tell it was picked out. It was so it was a deliberate. Very, very deliberate. Well, anyway, um, came back and, um, uh, you know, kind of, kind of brushed it off a little bit, but we all kept on talking about it. And like, wow, I wonder what that was, you know, and this and that. And at that time, bushcrafting and, uh, and uh, uh, survivalist type of backwoods activity really wasn't that popular, but there was classes, there was stuff to, to okay. go through. Okay. You know, uh, we had a thing, thing in school that was uh, called the Timeline. I think we talked about this earlier, but... Yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm really trying to get to the, your experiences. Yeah. That's, but that's, that, that, that all added to it. So a few years later, we were out uh, bouncing around, go goofing off, uh, you know, looking for gold as mm -hmm. back in those days, you know, you were able to do it. There in a the creek bed uh, was a, um, uh, I would say, series of, in, of uh, impressions that were not um, part of the, of the animal animals of that area. Because <laughs> everybody knows what a bear track looks like if you live in bear country. Mm -hmm. If you live in cat, uh, mountain lion country or leopard country or panther, panther, you all know what those tracks look like. We all know what a human footprint looks like because we make them. Yeah. Um, but when you're out there scraping around through the sand and, 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 and the little gravel uh, beds and you look down and you can see where a very symmetrical implant or in, uh, imp impression is made in the gravel and our footprint can maybe only go down a very small bit and this is down in the sand. Mm. And it's very symmetrical. Or shall I say the ones we came across are very symmetrical. It was um, as if they knelt it down, knelt it down, kneeled down, kneeled down, went down on all fours. And uh, the foot, the what would be considered the footprints of it didn't look like the traditional footprint. You could just see what might be their toes or the the front part of their foot digging down into the ground right or the sand I mean just by I guess displacement but there's definitely a knee um, knee type of uh, imp implantation or uh, impressions mm -hmm. and you could see smaller ones a little farther up that would be maybe an elbow huh and then there were scrape marks that we wrote we would we was probably either a hand or some type of a branch or something that they were using to, okay. to, or it was using. And there were several different sizes. Hmm. It wasn't like if I would do 10 of them in a row, but this, this stretched on for, let's say probably about a quarter mile along wow, the creek bed. Way. Yeah. Now you were telling me about another footprint that you guys found? Mm-hmm. A little story on that one. Well, uh, we're, we're kind of jumping in, 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 in age. Oh, age oh if you want to keep going, in, yeah, in, keep going. In, in, in time frame, but... No, keep going the way um, you are then if we're going to keep, go chronologically. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Well, then, as we really weren't aware of the smell back, back then. Oh, okay. Is to say, or the other evidence like, you know, hair samples or DNA or any of that stuff at that yeah. time. There could very well have been stuff like that sitting around you know well then a few more years went on and I actually uh, was uh, getting some some book smarts and uh, we went out on a little little outing again and this was more of a camping retreat kind of a thing campfire going noise and lo and behold it was like Damn, who's eating that? Who's eating that? <laughs> you know, it was a very pungent. Um, now, where was this? Out west? Yeah. Okay. Um, Hobolt, Hobolt Forest. Okay. Yeah, I've heard um, of that. Very pungent, very, you know, like everybody looked at each other like, you know, seriously, dude? You know? <laughs> but it came in from the wind and the way we knew that was it came in and then left. 
Okay. It wasn't like someone sitting there like uh, blazing saddles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it it just flowed in, and it's like, oh, okay, it's, uh, that's, that's, that's that's pretty cool, and the smell. Um, I'm sure everybody's been 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 around wet, furry animals, dogs, cats, mm -hmm. rodents, whatever. For some reason, they they put off a distinct must old smell, moldy old smell. Yeah, they do. For yeah. for some reason, humans have our own scent that, that we put off occasionally with our own for, uh, hormones and stuff, but this smelled like um, uh, very earthly, very um, herbal, very earthly. You know, it was, it was very much non-artificial. Gotcha. It wasn't perfume, it wasn't deodorant, it wasn't, you know, someone sprinkling... Uh, it was a bad smell, though. It was a very... You know, look, looking back on it, it's like, that smell belongs out here. Yeah. Um, pe people in, in, in the east, you know, they get accustomed to smelling skunks, which is part of the area. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a natural smell. You go out west and you have uh, various uh, pollens or various uh, other smells, bear smells, um, cat smells, that you can you can definitely know that, yes, I'm in bear country. Gotcha. Or yes, you know, a snake just, a den of snakes is over there, you can smell them. Uh, this you could tell was meant to be there. Gotcha. It was, it was not uh, not a artificial smell. No, no, no. Yeah. But anyway, um, the um, uh, times grew on, and, and we just got started, you know, getting all, all kinds of you know wood knocks, uh, uh, rocks. Uh, I think you call it clacking. Is, is when they bang the two rocks oh, together. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think if I remember the term. I have no idea. Well, and anyway, it's like, you know, kind of keeping two. everybody from falling asleep. Two rocks but banging each that, other. That is that's mainly for communication or uh, or uh, dominance, I guess. Other primates do that. Other species do that. Mm -hmm. Humans stopped doing it when cell phones were created. <laughs> so, and even now, you know, people have a tendency to make noise to draw attention. Yes. Humans make, they'll crank up the music, they'll, something to, you know, yeah. cough or, or do something to know, uh, let you know that they're around. But anyway, talking about the, the, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, di the different footprints, um, the, li the little one that, that you just captured, definitely a little one. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've, I mean. We, we, we've come across some that. Uh, and it could have been just the mama just dropped it down on that spot and picked it right back up yeah, yeah. possible you that's have, probably have no and it's, it's, it's uh the, the footprints that i've seen impressions that i've seen are really kind of a hit and miss they're obvious mm -hmm. but why is there just one yeah and that's everybody i've ever we've ever you know they said well how in the world can it make just one when it's out in the middle of a field or on a sandbar or going through snow, how can there be just one? Well, there's, I don't know if it's out in, out in the public or if it's been released yet or whatever, but uh, I actually know of uh, some footage that uh, was taken with a commercial drone, not a military drone, but a commercial grade drone okay. um, with um, um, night vision camera hanging off the bottom and these guys were uh, up, up, up north and uh, pretty good sized field I think they estimated it to be somewhere around three miles of an opening I can't say yes can't say no I mean that's these guys out there uh, with the adrenaline pumping with a, yeah. with a drone overhead and in the past, people have reported, well, it'll just disappear on you, or one minute it's there, the next minute it's not, or you will see light flashes, or um, illusionary movement, or you know, cloaked type movements, yeah. which we, military-wise, do have the capacity 
of cloaking um, the cloak of invisibility but anyway they got this where out in the middle of this field I mean it couldn't be any bigger of a Walmart parking lot if you tried <laughs> and um, drone drone cameras rolling and off to one corner by it's always just a a, 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 a imperfection on the lens the entire view of that camera was crystal clear but as it came up on this um, left side if I remember correctly of the camera there's a little bit of fluttering and then boom it appears mm. did it thing in the middle of this friggin field it uh, winks out again as a lot of people call it wow and it's like well there was some study done that well there are um, uh, interdimensional beings which was an actual uh, study done by non-marijuana and moonshine <laughs> taking people a little higher education which is what the new expeditions are for or to prove um, it's not a bunch of uh, people running around you know uh, yeah and let do, me do, do, doing I stuff. want to be clear about this we don't have to prove these things exist it's already been proven over and over and over again there's literally millions of eyewitness accounts sure some of them are fake but you're going to take you know all it takes is one to be true and there's no doubt it's true there's been film after film of them mm -hmm. the footsteps are real uh, footprints huh footprints what i say steps oh i thought i said footprints <laughs> footprints have totally been found and they've been i mean they've taken to all kinds of specialists they say yeah it's a real foot but they don't know what it is and they're not going to admit that it's a sasquatch sabe bigfoot whatever you want to call it i don't care for the bigfoot situation but i don't really care but i just want to make that perfectly clear i'm not here and he's not here to prove they exist we couldn't care less what you think we know they're true we know they're real and there's millions of people out there that know that it's real that's had these real life encounters and it has ruined their lives and you're going to go up and tell them oh you're lying right these guys these people that have totally won't even go back in i mean avid hunters that won't even go back in the woods again there's story well, after story of that so i just want to make that clear that we ain't trying to prove nothing it's already been proven that's 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 a whole nother thing what the quest is now is why why is it being covered up who's doing it and if we can't like make communication and see if we can't work together that's my thing but go ahead well um through the, the various people that i'm uh involved in with if you want to call it that or uh in you know in, in, in the groups with like here just all off the shoulder talking type, mm -hmm. type of things um everybody goes well I've never seen one. I've never done this yet. They're, they're nonsense or this and that. I have this one thing that I like to kind of bring up to people. It doesn't matter where you're from, who you are, what, what anything. Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting outdoors and there's two people, one you know, one next to the other, and one person looks up and sees a rainbow, the person sitting next to them might not see it from their point of view or their perspective because of the way that nature makes it you know a right. rain a rainbow is only in one spot you cannot do a 360 degree walk around a rainbow because it is light reflecting through uh, water vapors gotcha so i might be sitting here looking on one side of a tree or clearing yeah this gentleman might be sitting and his his view is on the other side of the tree and something happens on his side of the tree that doesn't happen on mine that does not mean it didn't happen that I didn't see it yeah you just have to be a little more uh, I don't want to say gullible that's the that's the wrong wrong uh, frame of mind to get into when you want to go out and see <laughs> these things but be a little more open-minded get some education I know that scares a lot of people to get out there and get some book smarts <laughs> but it's you know and, and anything from whatever topic you're doing yeah just and, learn about you know getting to know a, getting to know a um a species 
that we're somewhat connected to, you want to understand what they're what they're about, what their yeah. lifestyles or family structure might be by examining other uh, activities around them. Yeah. You know, just just because we do certain things that doesn't mean the rest of uh, the existence, yeah. existing animals or things do it, especially throughout the years, not just four or five years, but hundreds and hundreds of years of experience with these things, um, there's actually more evidence of these activities than there actually is of some biblical recounts. That's another thing that, oh my gosh, you're talking about, look at it, go back and study history. Oh yeah, I'm, I can find them in scripture, that's not yeah. a problem. Yeah. I can find them all, I've had a guy, guy the other day, like it's not there, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, okay, look at this verse, look at this verse, uh, you, 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 you're familiar with the story of um, Esau and uh, yeah. Jacob? Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, do you know that Esau was covered with hair and was very big? So he was so big, bad, and scary that he actually, um, while uh, Nimrod was being guarded by his guards while they were out hunting, he actually walked up and killed Nimrod, cut him up into pieces, and those guards didn't do a thing about it. That's how big, bad Esau was. So, you know, whatever you want to say there's plenty of stuff and through history oh you, my gosh, yeah. so don't 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 try to say well, scripture doesn't do this because you, you just go somewhere else yep and Le um, history they're all through it all the indian yeah. tribes every all every first nations people they all have they all have things you can go hieroglyphics in egypt and find yes. them so stop it and if you can convict a man of murder by one testimony eyewitness testimony then the one eye testimony I what's it called one eyewitness, eyewitness testimony that has saw these things that's it yep. there's been plenty of eyewitnesses there's been thousands and thousands and thousands of eyewitnesses and it's not always the same type of person it ranges like person, ranges but. over generations mm -hmm. backgrounds um, Social beliefs, um, yeah. re 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 religious uh, uh, beliefs, yeah. um, regionally, where they're from, what their jobs were, what their uh, mental capacities were. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, and I don't mean that as a negative thing, but you have younger people and older people saying, yes, I saw this. The younger person might not have as much um, experience as the elderly person, but nevertheless, hey, I saw that thing. Yeah, and it it it, it's, it, it just covers the whole the whole spectrum of what we are. It's uh, an eyewitness, so yeah, yeah totally, yeah. yeah, totally. But we, uh, okay. you, you, you're talking about uh, you know footprints and stuff like that, and what cracks me up is that um, here we are, we're we're walking around in fairly high tech modern type of footwear and some pretty rough terrain yeah you know not not just the hot ground or the rocks or um, um, barbs or, 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 or uh, you know cactuses or whatever snow right. yeah. ice the footprints that, yeah the footprints that the impressions are definitely, I guess you want to say, not done with a shoe. Yeah, it's barefooted. I guess it's, 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 it's you know it's definitely some some type of a um, uh, biological thing because you could see the ridges in them. Like you know, if, if you look at your fingerprints, you could see the the mm -hmm. what makes our fingerprints everyone different. It's called dermal ridges. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's the same with their footprints. Or same if their foot impressions in the sand or whatever, you can, the good ones, you can see the ridges and they're not all the same. Yeah. So if someone is going to go out and fake it, easily done, I'm not saying it can't be, but you're going to cast or mold or carve 
a couple different, you know, left and a right, I would think, <laughs> if you're that smart. And, you know, you start stepping around this thing, stepping around the area, and now you got multiple multiple imprints that don't match up with the one before it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, they, there's no way that whoever's like faking a, a print can't go to depth. No. Because if you find like on a, a muddy beat, like one out here, something muddy, mm -hmm. and you're only finding a print that deep in the mud, that's a fake. You can just about guarantee it because they're going to sink about that deep in the mud if that kind if it's that much if they can push it down that much they'll sink about that much and so and, and the, the weight of this and the way to kind of calibrate that is there's a thing called um uh, body mass index yeah and e even though a five foot 100 pound person compared to a six foot 200 pound person your weight Displacement. Dis displacement Correct. is calibratable, cal yeah, calibratable yeah, yeah, yeah. because of your body mass index. That's correct. Now, you know, if I, well, I'm just shy of six foot and I weigh approximately 180 pounds, my footprint is going to be a very uh, predictable mm, type of footprint right. in whatever material, yeah. sand, mud, snow. Yeah. Which has to do with also the size of his foot, the yeah. width of it, the breadth, everything. So, yeah. yeah. But now, if suddenly you come across something that you can put your your own size 11 boot, snow boot, or hiking boot, if you can actually put your foot inside of this footprint, there's no distortion on the perimeter of this in, in, uh, foot implant or in, impression. When you put your foot in there, and your foot is inside <laughs> of this footprint it's like well who and it's you go down i mean you're not stepping on the surface you're going down into this yeah impression it's like well you know holy crap and i'm carrying a 40 40 pound pack and, and still I'm, and i'm only going down um, you know, r r roughly an inch inch and a half i mean seriously you know this this dude is either packing out a full-grown moose, or uh, you know, he's a big dude with a you know, 17, 18 foot, 18 inch foot. A big boy. And there's, I, I can't read how many, but hundreds of dozens, I'm sure, of uh, impressions of castings uh, that are of various sizes, various dimensions, just like yeah. our. Our, 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 our foot our feet are um, we're, we're born a certain way yes our, our, our foot has an arch it has a sole it has pads you know, blah 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 there's doesn't humans can have flat feet uh, from uh, a medical condition called fallen arch or collapsed arch right you don't have that ridge uh, which actually hampers or makes your stride a little different but if you're wearing a boot that is a modern type of boot that is pre-designed for every possible foot, it has an arch in it. Yeah. Um, if you don't believe me, turn your shoe around. Look at the bottom of your friggin' shoe. You know, it's and you and you will see that you have the front, the back, and a little bit of a hump. Um, I guess we got off on a tangent here. I guess we better get back to. Yep. We're yep. running out of sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. So, all right. Let's go but back in, with anyway, the you know, with, with, with the experiences, um, uh, they they have ranged all, all the way up to uh, uh, debris huts, markers, um, and and the, the the markers not not just being pulled over branches or uh, trees that have been turned upside down where the you know which. I kind of find that a, a little hard to believe because you know, if you can pull a full-grown tree up out of the ground and turn it around and shove it back down in the ground, that's more than what I want to meet up with. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's um, a bad boy. Yep. I mean, all this, all these guys are bad boys. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Well, they, 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 they got to be because they are not really acclimated, I guess you want to say, 
to our lifestyle. Right. Uh, but and, and anyway, um, with all, and I, you know, it's, it's not a bell ringer, a flag waver, or um, if I could pat myself on the back kind of a thing. But the only way that I saw this stuff is to actually be out there with an open mind, with enough fuel, I guess, to drive my curiosity of saying, no, wait a minute, I know what certain things look like. That's not what yeah. these certain things, there's something so not quite right. Um, and you go where just, the evidence leads you. Yeah, you're not going to find them in a Walmart parking lot or at a bar stool somewhere. If you Come do, on. let me know and I will, I will take up drinking with them. But you yep. got you to gotta be out there where they're at. Um, and honestly, and, it's right here. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, you know, if they're here, they're here. It's, Land it's Between Lakes is crawling with these things. Yeah, and, and there's so much resource. And that's another thing, is resources. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we decide to up and move some places as humans, that's one of the really first few things you look at is, well, what's there for me? Yeah. You know, is there stores? Is there hospitals? My job? Yeah. Uh, what will the family do? Same thing with them, except these guys don't work for Amazon. So, you know, they're looking at what resources are in the area. Will it sustain their group? Yeah. Well, however many to uh, to be there for a while. Are they going to be compromised as far as their movement goes? Um, how, how many of the stinky other mammals are around that yeah. will interrupt them, that will you know, come across them? So their migration and his, uh, from out west to uh, over here in the, the eastern woodlands to down in Florida, which uh, I actually saw uh, what they called the skunk ape down there. That's a, totally, that's a whole new chapter there. Give us a briefing uh, on it, though. Um, these things, beings, are utilizing to their best ability the regions that they're able to get access to. Yeah. So how'd you come about going and see your actual sighting? Uh, oh, yeah, that, that, of, of, of the skin case. Well, I was uh, uh, stationed down in Florida. The uh, Makasuki tribe uh, uh, operates out of the uh, Everglades. And um, kind of basic, long, long story short, we decided to take a little trip out there to visit them. We started, uh, you know, talking with some, some of the uh, the tribe members, and uh, they said, "Oh yeah, that uh, you know, they uh, pretty much know where the skunk ape is." A few days later, we met up with them. They took us out on an airboat and uh, out in the middle of the swamp. The swamp is not perfectly flat. There's um, high areas, um, islands, built-up areas, mm -hmm. debris areas. You got ridges and yeah. the swamp. Um, like so we, you know, pulled up in this uh, airboat. Which, in Tennessee, we call them the bottoms. Yeah. Just remember that there may be a story coming up later. So. Um, um, sat there in the airboat, and the grass was high enough to where you had to stand up in the airboat to really see what was going on. And um, the, dude, the uh, uh, guide, he goes, oh, you know, there's one right there. First thing we thought was, yeah, it was one of their buddies dressed up messing with us. <laughs> um, if it was a guy dressed up in a Gillian suit, it was a tall boy. And uh, the, the, the grass, when you stood up, was, I would say about six foot. The grass came up to about, about his chest, maybe, you know, a little bit below his shoulders. It was like, day gone. And mm. uh, it's a big, is a big boy. Yeah. And they go, well, chances are there's others somewhere around. They're just below eyesight. You know, very seldom do they travel in just singular. Uh, in the, yeah, that's uh, what I've heard too. By, by themselves, there's always family members or, um, you know, uh, lookouts or whatever you want to call them. My little experience, that's what I've come to find out. Yep, 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 yep. So wasn't there a, a story about a moose? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, roaming around through the woods as we were, and uh, uh, 
is our our point of view is, is usually depending on what your equipment is that you're wearing if you have a hat with a brim that's about as high as you're going to look you're not going to walk around with your head tilted back walking through the woods you're going to be within about a 10 foot span of your vis of your viewing well you know here was the smell and uh you know, look around trying to figure out what was going on and one of them looked up into this tree and there was a full adult carcass moose <laughs> 10 12 foot up in this tree and there was no hurricane no tornado no anything that would have lifted this thing up into the tree mm. other than somebody or something was able to reach or towed it a full-grown moose 12 or so feet off the ground wow and this was a good sized tree it wasn't like the tree was bent over thing was uh, <laughs> uh you know stuck on it and the thing flopped back up in the air it was a pretty good sized tree someone um, had to put it up there yeah so you know we, we were all kind of you know looking around like uh that's pretty amazing holy crap you know or holy cow uh, holy moose <laughs> and um you know it's like there's no way and a lot of cats um uh, mountain lions and and, and 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 those type of cats i'm not talking about domestic cats but right cats right. will climb trees with their prey to keep it away from other uh wannabe uh consumers of it there ain't no way in the world a mountain lion i mean a full-grown moose there's there's no way i, I mean don't there's think so. you know and no way. The, the mountain lions that, that were out in that area yeah they, they might do a deer or a um or a um a bear you know they, they might do a smaller carcass that's about their own weight maybe mm -hmm. and we're talking a couple hundred pounds maybe 300 pounds at the most not thousands yeah, you know, pound a thousand, fifteen hundred pound moose hanging by its, um, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> twelve foot or so up, up, up off the ground, and just placed right over the limb too, wasn't it? I mean, it was right there. There were, you know, if we could have, we weren't going to by no means because that would definitely draw in some attention and wanted attention. But if you were to try to climb up there and dislodge it, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't think so. We just don't sense. have that strength. Because um, it was up in there, it, um, like like a cat will drag uh, the thing up and kind of wedge it into a a V where the limb meets the, the trunk of the tree, right. or where there's a branch, and it'll just kind of like hang there and rot, and pieces will fall off because it's not very secure because uh, they can you know the way that they do it. Yeah, this thing was up there to stay. Um, was there pieces missing off of it? I, I, I you don't remember. I don't, I don't recall. Because we were all just like, oh, get us, just, just get out of here. That would be a sight to see. Yeah. That would be one that's like, wow. Yeah. And that, because that's, you know, to see them going across the thing is one thing, a field or whatever. But not to see them and you walk up on a fresh kill. Yeah. You know, and that's with any animal. A bear, I don't know, a freaking squirrel will attack you over his meal. Yeah. So that's just something you just you don't you don't press it there. You just back out and yeah. let them have their space and to that, eat their, and that, their food. And that's kind of where our sixth sense, our, our survival instinct right. kicks in. You know, you can play all the video games you want, but you get out there <laughs> and suddenly your body starts tingling. Yeah. And you know, it's like, you know, last time I felt this way was. You yeah, know, during a certain event, <laughs> and it's like you know, oh, you know, what's what's going on? There's something you, you feel the static or the um, the aura in the area is very different. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, it is. Um, some some people will acknowledge, uh, will be able to uh, relate to that by various life experiences. When others will go, well, I just knew there was something wrong with him. I could just tell. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. You know, not to put any one particular 
the, um, a group of people above any of the others, but we all have that extra little oomph behind us if we're out and it's there. Yeah. If you ignore it all your life, you'll never see the rainbow or you never see the Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> you know? but yeah. If you're out there and you're willing to listen to your instincts or your built, yeah. built in survival things, um, you'd be really amazed. I mean, yeah. And for, 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 for the ones that, oh, I go out, I, I hike all the time. I can guarantee that you were on a trail and you were being watched and you yep. didn't even know it. One time or another, if you've been out there any time at all, you've been watched. Yep. And not, not, not just by Sasquatch, but a mountain lion. Yeah. Um, and if you're so nonchalantly, you're too busy you know, taking selfies or, or yakking with, with the group, which is the worst thing to ever do. Yeah. Um, if you're out there as, as a group, listen, know your surroundings. Don't get caught up in a conversation yes. or, you know, well, let's take this selfie standing on this rock and the next thing you know, you got stuff happening around you that you really should be aware of. Um, not saying don't take your camera, but be a little bit more aware of the yeah, your surroundings yeah. yeah yeah you can talk and chat and do all that when you get back to camp yeah now with that being said some noise you know we, we had right. in, in our group for bears and stuff that's that, yeah. and cats that's actually good and, yeah. and i don't have a problem making noise i couldn't care less because i'm going to make some noise i want i want everything to know i'm there and regardless um, of what it is some, some of the more except for a burglar in my house i don't want to be really <laughs> quiet my gun is already loaded and cocked he ain't gonna know where I'm at, or she. There's, so there's actually been documented um, on TV programs uh, um, that uh, uh, have tested the theory about is there certain decibel levels or certain octaves of a human voice is more attractive or deterrent to. Uh, other, other species that are more curious what we're doing yes okay. there is there is um if you got a bunch of guys out there it will send off a certain vibe a certain noise and being a uh, of a male voice or or lower uh, rumbling voice is actually different than if you have a group of a higher pitch type of uh, voices, mm -hmm. kids, That's interesting. women. That was actually proven on one of the Bigfoot expeditions on TV. They had um, um, various vo vo vocalizations uh, of, of humans. They were singing, playing oh, wow. music. Um, I think there was, uh, well, I, I know it was all done for ratings, but they had some uh, Girl Scouts out there, which I would think would scare the animal away, but um, <laughs> you know, you you had that chatter. Yeah. And when you hear their chatter, it's not all the same tone. You, know, you don't hear a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's, it's... you hear whist a, wh a whistling or or undistinguishable yeah. chatter. Um, You've you heard know. people testify that it, it it almost sounds like you have three separate tones in one yell yeah there's and, and it they, they they have no idea how to explain it but there's a low one and there's a mid and there's a high yeah. all in the same yell at yeah. the same time so i don't know i kind of, kind of put that in our perspective as humans and being able to talk and, and communicate the way we say a word the emphasis we put behind a word has different meaning even though we say the same word, word. correct um, and if you like deer have that squirrel if, if yeah. every animal has their way of communicating yeah. but with some verbal uh, uh, vocal vocalization it's at a level that our human ear has been muted to mm. You know, it could be a, a more of, I think they call it a, thro a throaty or more of a lower, you know, deep down. Um, if you ever walk through a zoo or through an area 
where there's predatory animals like lions or or uh, things, mm-hmm. and you hear them rumbling, you feel that vocalization, you know, yeah, uh, from, from that animal. Yeah, we're you know, if, if we're sitting here and we're talking, and I get a different tone in my voice that comes across to the people that are trying to listen to what I'm saying, well, something's different, or what's he trying to enhance in the conversation? Yeah. Same same thing with 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 these uh, with these characters. Um, I'm really looking forward to the day where we can kind of understand what different uh, things are. But even amongst our own species, there's communication that gets lost in a transaction, or certain languages, or mm-hmm. body language that. Um, Tell you what. Before, was, also, I just thought about it. before we run out of light. Tell me what your buddies are doing, or did out in Washington. And yep. Well, they're um, they, they, uh, the one particular group. They started out in the uh, Olympia Forest, which is uh, pretty close to the coastline. But uh, because they're having um, some um, issues out there in the, in the sorry guys, I woke up 4:30 this morning. With okay. with um, the forest fires and and the. the, the the uh, climate change, the, the heating up up there, it's 100 degree plus in Washington State. I mean, you know, seriously? Right. You know. Well, they started uh, their uh, um, search or expedition up there and they found out that uh, the animals are moving out because of the, uh, it's just not uh, acceptable to him. So they're actually, depending on the species, the yeah. herd, uh, they're moving in different directions. Well, the ones that they're uh, out after trying to trace down have actually crossed state lines. Um, of course, they didn't use the interstate, but they went, you know, back country. And um, uh, they went from uh, the Pacific coastline. Now they're up in uh, Montana. Um, and um, they're, they're able, they don't have radar tractors on them. But throughout their time in the woods, um, they're able to uh, pretty much follow the debris field, I guess you want to say. Oh, okay. The trail. And it's not like a bulldozer going through the trail. It's, okay. They're um, going by uh, lo- local sightings, local reports, pinpointing them on the map. And if you have a half a dozen going in a straight line. Yeah, that's where they're heading. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not some common sense to it's it. not whatever the main interstate is going through. You don't need you know, that, back yeah. country. Yeah, it's uh, the, these goofballs on, on the move, and uh, so yeah, now they're over there. Um, uh, I don't know exactly how many people are, are involved uh, right now because with the uh, virus issue and the social uh, socially issues, uh, some some of them had to. Uh, drop out where others took their places and mm. um, but yeah they're they're up there and I think if it continues um, I know they're, they're getting colder weather but it's not cold enough um, and the Canadian border is, is closed for us but it's not closed for the animals because they don't go through the checkpoints no matter if it says deer crossing or not they go wherever <laughs> They see fit. Um, yeah. Chances are they'll, you know, uh, b- because of the the climate changes, the migration path and their places of uh, occupation more than likely change compared to what it was a few years ago. Makes sense. And that's kind of what they're documenting now. Um, I know there's a, a group on TV that goes to the hot spots. Where okay, history says that at, uh, in the next month of September, this upcoming set month of September, in September there's been a huge amount of sightings in this one particular area. Yeah. Okay, then they go over there and they set up for, and of course they don't find nothing, which is... That's questionable. Different, one, yeah, but I understand it's done for ratings. However, that information is very critical because it has to do with the health of an area. Yeah. You know, if 
here we can kind of put up with okay we'll go to a grocery store and get whatever we need to get they don't necessarily have a sam's memberships correct so they have to deal with what is out and available the same way with the deer and everything the deer will migrate uh once the the farming areas get uh uh processed or whatever right. you call it mm -hmm. get, get get harvest same way it's the same thing um and there uh there's other uh, groups um, throughout the not just the United States, but uh, in, in any any place that humans can go, um, there's there's been groups that have tried to go. Uh, a while back, uh, there, there was actually one that went up to uh, the Himalayas, uh, but that was a very elite group that went there. Yeah, I, um, I that, that, that that was uh, b before. Uh, the restrictions, travel restrictions. Um, there are some that went down to. I just actually saw that. Yeah, there's some. There's some that went down to uh, the south of um, so, uh, Ch Chilean. Ch Chilean. Yep. This, uh, this group. part of the Ch Ch Chilean one too. Yep. Um, again, that was before. Yeah. Uh, whoever you want to blame for the virus, um, you know, it's a totally that's another chapter there. But yeah. uh, we'll get into that some other time. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they're just not here they're pretty much any place that you can walk to now mm. they go well how come there isn't any out in hawaii think about well, it but now there's some in australia okay well there used to be a land bridge that connected australia to that part of the world that yep. didn't always used to be islands there used to be a land bridge there and even i mean even islands they can swim to islands they yeah they they up in canada they swim to uh, what's that island? The biggest island in North America, uh, it's Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. They swim to Vancouver. They got them on film swimming back and forth from Vancouver yeah. Island. Now, you know, if you're so, our, our Olympic swimmer, I uh, know that changes every so many years, but they only have maybe a size 12 double E okay. swim. You know, they have uh -huh. big feet, swim feet. Mm -hmm. the can't you imagine how good of a swimmer that thing is if it has a 20 inch foot yeah. that's 10 it's inches big. wide? That's that's a, that's quite a little paddle. That is not a moose hoof print. And yeah. moose swim, deer swim, bear swim. Yeah. No, they're not going to swim the ocean. No. They're not going to go to Hawaii. No. But they can go down through uh, Central and South America. Oh, yeah. They can they can go up around the other way. I mean, it's it's not impossible. It's not and it's not impossible to no. It's just not impossible. I'm not even going to go down that road. Yeah, just uh, grow up. It's all. Pretty much any place we can go, relatively speaking, they have the capabilities of going. Yeah, yeah. even more. They got more capabilities than we do of sustaining in yeah. harsh environments. So if we can make it there, other than an isolated Pacific Ocean island, yeah, um, they can make it. Yeah, no, no, no and probably deal. have made it long, long before yeah. we were there. And the craziest part about it is, it's it's not just our documentation, but the ancestral uh, original people of that area have yeah. documentation of, yeah, and their stories and their. Uh, and they say, and, oh, that's lore. It's kind of like, yeah. no, I mean, and. Back in those days, when a story was told, it was done on an honest and, yes. and truthful thing. Where today, um, you know, you go uh, watch a story or a movie or um, an interview or, or whatever, and it's like, well, that guy is full of it, or I don't believe that. Or, well, back in those days, that was the main form of it. communication and education. So you're not going to tell your kid, well, you know, two and two is ten. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You know, this is the truth. This is how it is, and you're going to survive yeah. with the information that I give you. So their passed down history was more vital to them exactly than um, than we yeah. can ever imagine. Because they have no other way of documenting that. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just some, and there's writings, all kinds oh, of writings, yeah, but but there there was no videos, there's no cameras, there's you know, and their only way of documenting it is through verbal. Yeah. And that's just the way it, it happened. Yeah. yeah. And they took it very seriously. 
All right, Gary. Anything else you can think of? Any any other sightings? Any other uh, activity? Um, any other? We, we could go on for hours. I just had to sit for a few minutes and kind of remember where we were and what we did. But you know, I'm not exactly in my 20s now, so it's been uh, a lot of years out in the field. Okay. And not and not just as a kid, but uh, through various types of uh, training, um, uh, getting more aware of your of my abilities as an individual mm -hmm. and then I go out into the field and it's like oh wow I've been walking by that you know and that makes sense. tracking um, you know not too many humans have the ability to actually track uh, another object well I can follow footprints in the sand yeah until the water washes it away then what do you look for but like earlier when we found that footprint over there mm -hmm. there's been not a lot of people, but A, how long has it been there? We haven't had rain in a while, but that area is moist. Yeah. It's not we have. hard, concrete mud or dirt. Right. But that's a campsite area. Then, you know, how many people have thrown a tent up over there or um, whatever yeah. o o over there and haven't paid any one? one yeah attention to it and we don't know how long it's been there yeah. but it, it's something that heavy implanted that and into the ground and, and it's, it's very and heavy it's, uh, pretty fresh because the stuff yeah as you'll see the, in the we picture we had a bad a lot of rain and bad storm last week yeah but. um the stuff on the inside the print is just as fresh as the stuff on the outside the print okay and it's not like the mold the uh, the grass or um, moss moss is uh dead on the inside Right, and it's fresh on the outside. That's well, okay. That's an old, you know, old print, or they got extremely lucky and crunched down dead stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, unfortunately, it's only one. I would say average. Yeah, it's not. Looking, it's, yeah, it's not outstanding. I mean, you see the toes and stuff like that. Maybe I'll get a little closer tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah, depending. And what get if you go by size. Um, uh, it's a small human if it uh, it's probably close to our size foot. Yeah, but our weight is what I'm getting at. Oh the weight okay. our, our weight uh, We were walking all around the place and we couldn't put a dent mm -mm. dent in the area so the, the weight had to be serious. Yeah, even for a baby now does it need to go to Jenny Craig and Probably not do that, but now that looks pretty healthy Probably pretty healthy, pretty stoked, pretty. Yeah. All right, Gary, we're running out of light. Oh, yeah, big time. We're done. Um, I hadn't decided whether I'm going out tonight or tomorrow night. We're supposed to get a bunch of people in tonight. If we do, I will probably not go just because of the stirring, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but this is the main thing that I wanted to get done on this trip. So thank you guys for watching. If, uh, well, this is, this, oh, this I'm, the other video will be another video and I don't know which one I'm going to put first, but, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Appreciate you so much. Be sure to hit subscribe. Give a thumbs up for Gary. He's, he's quite a gentleman to, to give us this interview and, and let us know there's so much more of this. He, he's got in him that we just cannot put it in a, a, a video. We may, if he allows us maybe do two or three more somewhere sometime and really get some some knowledge out of him but uh i think that's got to be it so love you guys and we'll see you on the next one yep. stop recording <laughs>